a Thursday. I don't know why we're here. I have no idea why we're here. But we're here. Uh, actually, I know why we're here. Last night, we were interviewing Keiko of the Flying Hawaiian, and due to an outage on Blog Talk Radio, well, uh, we got half a answer uh, about the European tour that he... Uh, well, you know, I was flying it. That that was pretty much it. And uh, <laughs> so we got him back, thank goodness, uh, uh, on on a very quick turnaround. And uh, that's why that, that's one of the reasons he's one of my uh, favorite interviews. But Dan, uh, how do you feel about a triple threat this week? This is our third time in a row this week. I feel like I should be getting paid. Oh, uh, anyway, uh, you can. Uh... <laughs> no, dude, are you kidding? Uh, we were in the room. We had a great time. The show, other than the um, technical difficulties last night, was going great. And um, Keiko has taken time out of his day again to, you know, make up for it. I, I feel great. <laughs> yeah, this is uh, pretty awesome. I'm glad we got him back. He's actually on the line. We're going to get to him in just a few seconds. I just want to say you can follow me on Twitter at Folsom County. You can find uh, Dan, the above average comedian. Dan, the man, the man in the box. Dan the man in the box. And where can they find you, Dan? You can find me at... In a box. No, Dan Law eight three. Uh, Omega Squad may or may not be joining us. Uh, I'm not sure. He did. Uh, you can subscribe on iTunes. Just search for Hell in a Cell or Hell in a Cell Talk Radio. Either one, you'll find us. We're proudly part of the BradyHicks.com lineup. Uh, and the, the reason why I'm in a box tonight is because I myself am having technical difficulties too. So this is the best I can do on two minutes' notice. <laughs> Seven minutes' notice. Uh, but, uh, hey, um, my name's Dean, and I've got to be to the point of our I, I don't even know what you said. Uh, you can follow the official Twitter of Hell to Cell Talk Radio, a H-I-A-C Talk Radio, and like the Facebook page at facebook.com slash Cell in the Hell. So, Keikoa, it is a pleasure to have you back two nights in a row. Uh, I want to thank you, first of all, for a very short, short turnaround, and welcome to Hell in the Cell Talk Radio. Yeah, now today it's going to cost you triple. I mean, I uh, charged you double yesterday for the, interrupting the Giants game. Now it's triple because I had to do another day. So it's triple today. Triple, triple, triple. And it's our third time, so a lot of threes going on. Uh, Dan's going to start out again. Same question. So, Dan, take it away. So, okay, Koa. <laughs> yes. <laughs> you didn't have any butterflies on the plane ride we were talking about. When did the uh, when did it first set in? Um, when did you first get nervous, if at all? Uh, yeah, so like I was saying yesterday, I was flying in and. No, I'm just messing with you. Oh, 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 you got me. Oh, you got me, dude. You, I was about to say, what the fuck? <laughs> uh, I, I had to throw that in there. I was like, oh, what if what if this happens again for the, for the second time in a row? So I'm just going to mess with them. Um, but no. So yeah, I, I like I was I was trying to say yesterday. I think butterflies didn't really set in until it was about like, you know, an hour or so before bell time. Uh, you know, I was when I was in the back like getting ready, it was kind of settling in. Like you know, you've been doing this for almost six years now, and you know, in this business, obviously, not even six years is pretty short. And you know, I, I feel at that moment I felt pretty accomplished because I'm like. You know, I, I've gotten to do WWE, you know, I, I've gotten to be on worldwide television, and now, like, you know, it, this is real, you know, you're in another country doing what you love to do just because, you know, you've, you've worked hard at it. So I was really, like, I was really proud of myself at that moment. It was really a, a cool moment, and that's when I started to get butterflies, like, oh, this, you know, this is real. And then, um, but obviously, like, once I, you know, once I went through the curtain, everything was fine, and the rest of the tour, uh you know, I was perfectly fine with everything. So no more butterflies after the first night. So when the when the when your plane landed, I mean, what did it feel like? I mean, it's first of all, is this your first time going overseas, personally or otherwise? Uh, yeah, th it was my first time going overseas at all. Now, where was you, where was your first stop? Uh, I flew into I flew into the London Heathrow Airport, and uh, I knew that I was going to have to. See, I had I basically had one of two options. Uh they didn't need me down they didn't they didn't need me until 
they wanted me to get into Bogner Regis on a Friday, but when I was told to get there on a Friday, I wasn't sure like what time I needed to be there. So I didn't know to get there in the morning or the, or the night or whatever. So I was like, well, instead of just getting a hotel near where I landed, I'm like, I'll just go to Bogner Regis tonight, which would be a Thursday. Uh, I, I got there Thursday morning and I was like, I'll just, I'll just get there now because then I'm at least right there. So, you know, at any time I could just, you know, pop up. Um, so I needed to head to, uh, what's a, a holiday camp called the Butlins. Um, so I ended up taking like two or three trains to get there. And then finally, just when I got there, it was more or less a hassle trying to find out like where the hell I was staying, like where, where the hell I should stay. And, uh, I was like walking around, I found a bed and breakfast and they said that there was vacancy and I knocked on the door. Nobody answered. So I was like, okay, I guess I'm not staying here. Um, but then I just walked to the Butlins, uh, and then, uh, they were like, oh, you're one of the wrestlers. Okay. Well, we'll put you in a room. And, and it was that easy. So it, at least it, it could have been a lot worse, but, uh, it was a, it's just a, such a long day of traveling just to get down there between like how many trains I took and everything, but it was well <laughs> worth it when I got there. How many, how many hours that first day did you sleep if at all? The first day, once I got to the hotel, I actually I took a couple hours sleep nap because I was still like adjusting because I left uh, the Newark airport at like 7:30 at night hour time and then I got there. Uh, what time did I land? I landed at like seven in the morning over there. Mm. So um, yeah, it, it totally it didn't like completely throw me off because I got to sleep a little bit on the plane, but it was still weird. Uh, to just be like, well, it doesn't seem like it was that long ago. Um, so yeah, I just took a couple hour nap, and then by the time it get it got, uh, you know, on the later side that night, I passed right out. I was exhausted, so <laughs> it, it didn't uh, affect me too much. So next question: um, How long did it take you to visit a pub? How long did it take me to visit what? A pub. A pub? Uh, yeah. I don't drink. Uh, oh. I don't drink at all, actually. So, oh, no, yeah, he's no, straight edge, Dan. He's no, 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 no fish and chips. I, 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 I'm not a big fan of fish. Uh, yeah, I mean, like, if it's seasoned right, if it's seasoned right, and the right toppings are on it, then sure, I'll eat it. But uh, uh, not uh, fried fish. And besides, like, uh, I, I really didn't want to eat like that crappy while I was over there. But it, yeah. then I ended up, I ended up eating crappy anyway. But at least it wasn't fried fish but no I, I didn't have any fish and chips but uh but no and i didn't visit any pubs i i did i did go to one bar the entire time i was there but it wasn't until like way later it was like i think like uh within like the last two weeks of the tour that i finally went out with the guys and everything so i got i went once okay <laughs> okay now how long was the tour in its entirety six weeks okay it was a six week tour now your first opponent uh, is it anybody we knew, or uh, what was that match like? Your first experience before an uh, international crowd? Um, the first match, uh, I forget. I like. I was. I know I was in a tag match, and I was with a guy by the name of Titus. Uh, he's from Canada, and uh, my two opponents. I remember one was, uh, I believe it was Tony Spitfire, uh, or Tony T side, whichever. Uh, I you know my apologies for the for the names, um, but um, uh, yeah it, it was it, I'm I'm trying to remember who exactly you faced it was, you know there were so many matches that I did over there but uh, I did I know I did a tag match the first night and uh, you know they wanted me to come out with the American flag and everything and uh, hmm. then I, it was a real uh, reality check on how much they hate Americans over there. Uh, and it was basically like the Amer- like if you if you went out there and you portrayed an American, it was like you are hated the entire time. Um, wow. So that was fun uh, because I got to at least you know represent my country and at the same time like you know just kind of shove it in their face like yeah I'm American I'm American so that was fun. <laughs> um, fun to be on the bad side for once. <laughs> <laughs> how was uh, how big were the crowds compared to um, local shows here? Um, well, the, the Butlin shows, uh, the holiday camp shows, uh, were always packed. Um, there was always, 
you know, if we didn't break a thousand, it was damn near close to it every time. Um, wow. The only times that it didn't get packed like that was when it was like really nice weather outside. And I'm not, I'm not sure if you guys know, but the weather in Europe is terrible compared to what I like. I like, yeah. you know, I like the 90 degree weather so that I can go swimming and I can go to, you know, water parks and you know, just sit out and tan and enjoy the beaches. And then I got over there and it was like 65 degrees. And I was like, and I did not prepare, like I didn't bring jeans or sweatpants or jackets. I thought it was summer. Yeah. And so I was, that's what I was expecting. Um, so even like when it, on days, like it got to like, you know, 70 degrees or something of that sort, like everyone was outside. Um, so not, not as many came, but it was still packed all the time. Like, you know, some of the guys that have done these uh, these tours a couple of years now in a row would look out and they're like, "Oh, it's dead." And I look out there, I'm like, "I see, I see 700 people. I don't know what you're talking about." And they're like, oh, "It's dead out there. There's barely anybody here." And I'm like, "I see 700 people. I don't know what dead to you is, but apparently that's <laughs> dead." Yeah. Oh my god. Wow. So uh, is it is it a hotter crowd in England, or is it uh, are they sitting on their hands, so to say? It depends. It de- it really depended on like where you were because um, you know the Butlins camps were always they were always great. Um, you know, like the exactly like my first night, I thought the crowd was was really hot, and then I heard some of the like the coworkers of the Butlins like, oh yeah, it's, it seems really quiet tonight, and I'm like, what is everyone talking about? <laughs> like, am I so used to garbage that like? <laughs> this is this is garbage to them. Like I, I don't get it. So it, that was really I mean, throwing me off. Um, yeah. But there were there were shows where like people would just you know they'd sit on their hands. They wouldn't they wouldn't uh, you know get involved in the match as much. But by the time you know the match was over and the babyface got the pin, like they just you know they they got loud and it was just like where were you that whole time? So like you, they would leave that show like, oh my god, like that was so entertaining. I, you know, I had a great time. I can't wait to come back, even though they don't say a peep all night. So that part was was weird. Also, that was a learning experience. Did Dan? Did you have something? Oh no, I was just gonna say it's it's very refreshing to me to know as hard as worker as a lot of you guys are. Um, I one thing that drives me crazy. Is the um, the fact that the crowd sits on their hands of the shows I've been to. So the fact that um, you had a you know crowd on fire just makes me very happy to know. Yeah, and uh, and it, and one of the things that uh, you know that I've definitely learned uh, from you know from the guys over there that I've now incorporated into kind of like the I guess the the new. Okay, go. I guess I guess the, with the way you word it, I've had two two shows now since I've been back in these two weeks. I worked for Vanguard Championship Wrestling down in Virginia, and I wrestled for uh, WXWC4 uh, out in Lansford. And both shows, I've incorporated this like new uh, this newer style to me. Like just you know, still the same me, but just uh, it's just you know, you could tell that there's something different, and I and I know that there's something different because. It's, it just makes it, it made wrestling a lot easier for me here, uh, you know, from what I learned over there, which is which makes me a lot happier, um, no. and it's making the, the crowd a lot happier. Like within seconds uh, at BCW, literally my first match back, like I flew back on a Friday, and literally the next morning I left for Virginia, um, and uh, that Jeez. match, like they had no idea, they had no idea who we were. I, I teamed up with my my tag team partner. Sebastian Cruz, uh, and we did a tag team match down there. Um, and literally, like, within 30 seconds of the match, the crowd was already chanting Tropic Thunder with, with you know, kind of like the ideas that I had brought to the match or whatever. Oh. And, uh, you know, it was just, it, you know, the owner was, the, the promoter was like, you know, we, we couldn't have asked for a better debut out of you guys. Like, the crowd was talking about us all night, so, you know, we were really appreciative of it. So, it, it's, uh, I'm really, really thankful for like what I've learned over there because it's, now it's just making, it's just making my job so much easier. And I tell you what, down here I'm going to be making it to one of those Virginia shows. You're close to me there, so I, I'm oh, going to be looking forward. I'm going to be looking forward to that. 
We're back in uh, November, November 17th, I believe. It'll be yeah. uh, myself and uh, Sebastian Cruz taking on their tag team champions. Uh, yeah, can Can you give me a ride? <laughs> <laughs> uh, it depends. If you're if you're by that uh, that bridge that costs like twelve dollars to drive across, that's like twenty miles long. Then no, unless no, you no. unless you unless you pay for that bridge, that's an expensive bridge. All right, you got, you just travel down ninety five. Just pick me up on the way. I'm four miles off. Oh, all right. If you're off ninety five, then that's fine. Sweet rock and roll. <laughs> yeah, there's a Dan's offering. Uh, what is it? Dinner and. Uh, I said I said you guys drive me. I'll fill the tank at one point and I'll buy you guys dinner. Hey, that that works for us. That works for us. But you just got trunk seat. <laughs> <laughs> all right, that's cool. All right, whatever. <laughs> okay, uh, moving on, uh, getting back to what you were saying. Um, now, the different style in England, uh, you said you picked up a few things. Now, uh, how is it different as far as an English style uh, versus the American style that we see on TV and we see at the local uh, VFWs and whatnot? Well, it, it's not necessarily – I mean, like, they advertised uh, – they were they were called All-Star Wrestling over there, and it was basically they were promoting, like, American wrestling um, and just – the the things that I that I picked up over there was just like you know you know th- here it's it, it, you know you go out there and and you wrestle and you, you know you just kind of you want to get over with with that and it's almost like a lot of these promoters uh, you know that are that are in the states now it's just like you know go out there and and and, and get over with your wrestling you know like don't don't interact with the crowd you know don't clap to get them going or anything like that. Hmm. You know, just just focus, just focus on the match, and you know what? If that's if that's what they want, you know that that's fine. Um, but then you know, I get to, you know, I get to Europe, and it's like, you know, it's, since it, since it's at a holiday camp, they're like, you know, most most of these fans aren't wrestling, or most of the people that are in the audience aren't wrestling fans. So you really need to like communicate with them as much as you can. Like, if you have a split second to look at somebody, and and you know. Do something to pull them into the match. Do it, and so that you know that's what I learned over there. It was literally, literally turn, do something. Okay, like a lot less, you know, still a lot of action over there, but but uh, you know at the same time a lot of communication with them. Um, and I, you know, I always know, like knew, you know, getting trained and you know the years experience that I've had here, you know, communicate with the crowd, if, you know, to keep them entertained and everything of that sort. And I'm and I'm perfectly fine with that, but. You know, going back to my point, it's just we, you need it a lot more over there. So now that I learned to do it a lot more over there, I'm incorporating that here, and it's pulling them in a lot more. And uh, you know, so it's definitely, you know, it's definitely great that the the fans are that I'm getting the reaction out of the people that I want, and that's uh, you know, that's making me happy, and it's making them happy. That's uh, that's really interesting. So you're saying that it's more of a psychology based uh, type of style. I, yeah, I, I guess you could say that. I mean, they uh, they really they really like watching the the heel get the crap kicked out of them over there. <laughs> uh, here, it seems like you know, it seems like a lot of matches have a tendency to you know the the heel gets uh, you know a lot of control in um, you know the match, and then finally you know. The good guy sooner or later, you know, makes his comeback and everything, and then it, and, you know the fans, and then the fans get into it because it's like, yeah, he's finally, you know, he's making his move, he's making his move. Uh, and over there, it's like they just want to see the heel get the crap kicked out of them. And uh, <laughs> so, I mean, that was interesting. So, but yeah, I mean, it, it's it's a different type of psychology, but in the same instance, it, it's the same. Uh, it, it's hard, it's hard for me to explain. But if you would see, uh, if you see, if you would see a match. From the from the tours that we were doing, you'd go. Uh, I see where he's talking about now. Um, so I'm, I apologize that I'm not explaining it to as, as much as I'd like to. Um, but I know that you would get it once you would see it. I got you. Uh, is that or any? Is it? Uh, I have two questions. I just add, thought of one. You're gonna add in? Are we gonna be able to see any of this stuff on the DVD? There's one match on the DVD, uh, and the reason that uh, there wasn't more matches uh because uh a lot of the matches that I had over there were 
you know, about 20 minutes long. Uh, oh. If not, if it, if it wasn't 20 minutes long, it, it was it was damn near close to it. Um, oh. So by the time the, uh, I guess the documentary portion of it was over, there was enough footage to put like one match in there, and then there, if I would have had like a 10-minute a match, I would have been able to fit it in, uh, oh. but it. it didn't it didn't work out that way? So there's one match on the DVD. It's myself versus uh, a, a guy by the name of Sam Adonis, who's uh, out of Florida. Um, huh. He was actually uh, he was actually um, you know signed to WWE for a little bit, I believe, under Sam Elias. But don't you know don't quote me on what his name was down there. But uh, he right. did get a, he did get a little bit of a developmental contract, um, but they parted ways. But he's you know definitely looking. Uh, to get back in there, he's working pretty hard, and you know he's a great guy. Uh, learned a lot from him, also, uh, and I thought the match went absolutely smooth and perfect. So, definitely one. It, it was it was probably the the match that I thought went, you know, the the smoothest. It just seemed so crisp. So that's why I, you know, definitely picked that one to be on the DVD. Do you think there's anything that you're going to take from these matches that you had? In Europe, and in in I can't talk tonight, man. And integrate it into your matches uh, back in the states now. Uh, yeah, definitely. I mean, there you're. It, it's it's almost seems it almost seems like there's there's a light. There's, you know, there's some kind of light that's that's lit now when I'm out there and, I, and I'm a lot more alive. And um, you know, I can definitely thank the guys from you know that that I was on tour with for that. Um, they they really. They 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 knew that I was you know and and thanks to them again they gave me the compliments by saying that I'm a good wrestler and I really appreciated that especially with some of the guys that have been there for so many years and and have been in the business for so long and they and they gave me a lot of compliments on my wrestling uh, and you know even though they were giving me compliments on my wrestling they did the exact thing that I wanted to do and and exactly what I wanted to take from this is this fine tuning of things that I can get better at because you get to, you know, and it, and it's no offense to anybody. I'm not picking out names of anybody, uh, you know, on the indie scene in, in the States, but, you know, it's hard to go to somebody and it's somebody that says, you're like, hey, I saw your match and I thought it was good. And, you, you know, obviously you ask them, like, is there anything that I can do to better myself? And then they give you the answer, like, no, everything looked, everything looked great on my end. It's like, that's not what I want to hear. You know that's not going to make me better. You know, I and, and it's uh, it's something that I definitely got over there. It, it was always like, okay, it, it was it was never a perfect match. And 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 I know that I'm never going to have a perfect match. I'm never going to have an absolutely perfect match. Right. But at least at least over there, I walked out of there and they said, this, 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 fix it. Okay, this. Fix oh. it. Next match. This. Fix it. Okay. Wow. And it and, and as as much as I loved it, I hated it at the same time because my confidence <laughs> went down. Yeah. And you know, it, it, and it got irritating because some of the stuff that they kept telling me to fix was I'd go out the next night and I thought I would do better, and they're like, "No, nah, still not there. Keep going." And it and I got so irritated because I'm such a perfectionist, and uh, but uh, sooner or later. You know, I'd come through the curtain and they go, that was it. And I'm like, thank God. So, it, you know, it definitely helped me a lot, but it was so aggravating at the same time. Um, did you have any bad, bad moments in the ring over there, or was everything pretty much on the button? Go, go, go. It, nothing, nothing bad in the ring. Outside the ring, yes. Uh, I did. Uh, I did have some bad some bad times uh there's a lot of th there's a lot of things that that go on over there uh that I needed to learn um because as as much as uh as, as much as you can learn over here in and there's a lot of old school rules that you know obviously like I either heard about or I was told like okay this is how it is and then when I got on the indie scene over here, it was like, where are all these rules that these guys are talking about? Because I don't see it. Like, it just seems like, I, you know, and I, I'm not going to go into like all the rules or whatever, because these are just examples or whatever. But, uh, you know, 
Um, but then I got over there, and I thought it would have been the same over there as it is here, but these guys are traveling from wherever they are. You know, there was guys from Canada, Japan, Ireland, Germany, Scotland, you know, Florida, South Carolina, everywhere. There's guys from everywhere, and they take this so, so seriously, which is great. But the problem that I ran into was I wasn't, you know, I had to basically get my head back to what I had, you know, either learned or heard since the time that I started this wrestling. So the first couple of weeks started off really rocky because, you know, I had to learn these morals and I had to learn these rules. And, you know, as hard as I tried to get along with some of the guys, I kept messing up. And that's my fault, and I apologize to those individuals, um, you know, that I that I got off on the wrong foot. But I, by the end of the tour, you know, I, I went up to each guy and, uh, you know, I talked to him about it. And I apologized for the rocky start, but it, it seemed as if everybody, I, I've gained everybody's respect by the end of it, which I was so happy about. So, yeah, the first couple of weeks were kind of rocky. Though that was, that was really the hard part. Um, the, the wrestling was not the hard part. It was uh, learning um, how to be how to be on the road with uh, with another team. So that was uh, a phenomenal learning experience. Now, did you have any creative control or any say in what happened, or is it pretty much the same infrastructure as the show stateside? Um, did I have any control? Um, no, I had I had no control. It was you know show up wrestle. Next town. <laughs> <laughs> How many towns in total? Towns, I have no idea. Uh, you know, I, I was. It, there's so many different uh, what they call runs up there. There's there's a lot of different there's a lot of different teams traveling to different uh, areas all in all in one week. Um, so it's kind of hard to to count how many towns you were, you I was exactly in. And the other part of it was, you know, if we did, you know, two shows in one day, uh, wow. I don't know. It, like, you know, it seemed like a short car car ride. Jesus. Um, but I, it might have been in the same town, or we might have, we might have, you know, gone to another town. I had no idea. I just got in the car and and I was told where to go. You know, you're going with this person. Okay. So, I I would have no idea how many towns I was in. Uh, how many double headers did you do? Uh, the, there was a lot of shows. Uh, I mean, I mean, and a lot of times, uh, you know, some of the, sh- some of the shows I was, uh, I was doing two matches on one show. So even though like, I, you know, uh, such as like some of the, um, the Butlin shows, uh, you know, I was wrestling probably like the second match and then, um, you know, I would get integrated into a, uh, a four on four over the top rope match, you know, at the end of the night. Um, so it was uh, a lot of times I was wrestling two matches. So it, it was really difficult. I mean, it, it was hard. It was hard as heck. Um, you know, your body definitely can't, it's trying to keep up as much as it can. And, and mine actually held up pretty, pretty good, which was, uh, which I was pretty happy about. Uh, but at one point I took a bad bump on my neck and, uh, you know, at that point it's like, there, there's no time to rest it or anything really like, uh, you know, I think we would have, you know, w- one to two days off a week. Most most of the time it was two. Um, so one of those days it's like, you know, just skip the gym, relax, sit on the couch, ice your neck, relax it. But that's still not enough time. One day was not enough of a rest time, but it was enough to at least, you know, keep you going. Um, but now that I'm home and, you know, I'm having, I'm not wrestling every day, uh, you know, back to the weekends and everything, I have more time, so now you know I'm resting, I'm stretching, and uh, you know heading to the chiropractors to get realigned and everything of that sort. So my body is uh, definitely back on track. A question I had uh, when we were talking, you were still in England. Uh, you said there were a lot of ups and downs. We talked about a few of the downs. Now, what were some of the ups? Some of the good moments that happened over there. Some of the good moments was definitely just um, you know interacting with the guys. Um, you know, just like kind of like breaking that barrier of like, okay, I can, you know, I'm starting to consider you a friend, uh, you know, and and getting to to have more friends in this business, 
um, is, is makes me a lot happier. I mean, it's, it's the little things for me. Um, so being able to be to say like, oh yeah, you know, I have a buddy in in England or I have a buddy in Scotland. You know, I, I like I like saying that. You know, and I and I like uh, you know keeping in contact with them. You know, through Facebook or Twitter, or whatever you know, whatever it is. Um, you know, so one of the guys, Ollie Brown. You know, I, I really, uh, you know, I really got to, uh, you know, be really close with him. Uh, you know, over the time that I was there, um, my last week, uh, I was with uh, Mark Haskins, um, and he, uh, him, and I, you know, really got to talk a lot about, you know, a lot of personal stuff. So that was really cool. Um, so that, that, those were like more of the ups. It was just like, you know, it, cause at that point it felt like I was home. It felt like I was with one of my boys and we were just sitting down having a conversation and just really just kind of like unwinding about like stuff that didn't have to do with wrestling. So that, those, that was, you know, some of the ups, um, you know, going to certain towns and then seeing like the beautiful sights, uh, like I didn't get the sightsee, but just like driving through, you know, though, you know, that was nice. And, uh, but more or less, just like the, the friendship that I gathered over there, the, the, those were more the uh, the ups, I would say. I just lost my train of thought. I'm sorry. Uh, <laughs> DVD question. Thank you. Uh, <laughs> I was going to ask, when is A Warrior's Journey, the DVD that you worked on, uh, when is that going to be released? September 15th. It will be uh, at my merchandise table. Yes. And and that's at ECWA. That's when it's uh, yes, first available. It is. Okay. Yes, it is. So uh, that that's very exciting. Now, uh, what's the price point on that? Give us a little information about the DVD. We talked a little bit about it, but just give us a, elaborate a little bit more on the DVD. Basically, the the DVD is just a, it's it's more of like a it, it seems like a whole movie, you know, sort of speak. I mean, a lot of times, like. Uh, you know, for WWE, when you see, like, uh, highlight videos of these guys going overseas and, you know, Japan or Mexico, you know, anywhere, anywhere, uh, obviously Mexico's not overseas, but you get what I mean. Um, but you see them, you know, come out with, like, their home cameras uh, every now and then, and they, you know, take pictures of the crowds, and they're kind of videotaping for their, their own little personal use. And I was like, you know, that's a, that's a cool idea. Um, because I, I would like something like that, you know, just for like a keepsake, you know, just to say like, yeah, you know, this was when I was here. This was nice to have. So, you know, basically this DVD is like my home, home movies. Um, you know, just seeing me travel from wherever the heck I am to wherever the heck I'm going, uh, different, like funny things, like, you know, throughout the tour, uh, you get to see me get in trouble. Uh, I did get in trouble for, for one thing, uh, you know, long story short, I got in trouble and they have a tradition over there where if you're found guilty of whatever you get in trouble for, you have to run a mile and if, and you have to run a mile within 10 minutes and if you don't run a mile in 10 minutes, then the next day you have to do it. And if you don't finish it that day, then you got to do it the next day. So I got in trouble Wow. and I had to run the mile and that's on there. Um, you know, you get to see more of a, a lot more of a personal side for me. Like, you know, I open up and I talk about my relationship at, at home and, you know, how, uh, you know, it's hard to, to be away from home and, you know, to be away from, you know, family and everything of that sort. And I, you know, I didn't know how hard it was until recently because I, you know, growing up, I never really had a family. Um, you know, my parents separated and, um, you know, some hard troubles with my mom, real long story, but that's not about the DVD, but long story short, you know, now I, I really have a family. So now I, like, I, I really got to learn how hard it was to, to be away from family. So you, you get to see that, you get to see some of the sites, you know, and you get to see a lot, just a lot of backstage stuff that a lot of fans, I, I think would say like, Oh, it'd be really cool if, you know, if we could see like how this was set up or, you know, you know, everything of that sort, just like backstage, you know, see the guys and everything like that. So, you know, that's that's basically what the DVD is. You know, it's, it's basically a home movie, and then a match is thrown at the end, you know, just for anybody that wanted to see, you know, one of the matches from there. Um, so, yeah, I, I thought I thought it turned out really well. Uh, I uh, I wish that there was a lot more crazier stuff that I could have put on there, but I think it's uh, it's just <laughs> enough to uh, to keep everybody happy. Now, what's the running time on that? Uh, the running time with the match, I believe it's just over an hour. Okay. So not okay. too long and not too short. 
So it's like just in that, just that, in that perfect, middle. perfect amount of time. Yeah. Go ahead, uh, Dan. No, I was going to ask, um, what was your, uh, did you have a favorite venue that just felt better than the rest, had a better crowd? Um, do I have a favorite venue? The my favorite crowd was probably uh, um, I would probably say Bogner Regis, um, and the reason being because most of the shows that I did there were all at night, so it always was packed. Um, like I said, you know, so for a holiday camp, if it's nice weather outside, everybody wants to be outside. So, um, and most of the shows that I was doing was in like the early afternoon, about like three o'clock or four o'clock of that sort. But Bogner, we always did night shows. Um, so it was always wow. packed, and the crowd was always electric there. Um, mm. So I really, I really liked uh, wrestling for there, um, for that particular venue. Um, but also, uh, Minehead, or no, excuse me, Skagness was uh, was all my like really close second favorite because the uh, the setup of uh, their center stage there is uh, is really breathtaking. They have uh, a really nice huge room and it's got uh, a balcony like second floor that that sees down to the uh to the ring so it packs a lot of people also so just like looking around you, you know you look at all the people on the bottom and then you look up and there's a lot more people at the top so that was that was pretty cool so yeah the bogner and uh skagness were my two favorites what was the uh name of that menu just bogner regis uh, the Butlins, the Butlins camp, and then it was in Bogner Regis. Both of them were the Butlins. Thank you. Now, coming up on September 8th, uh, you're going to be uh, wrestling for CZW. Uh, that's yes, the I am. Chris, that's the Chris Cash opportunity match. You're uh, taking on Pepper Parks, uh, and that's, of course, at down with the sickness for CZW. Now, uh, what's that opportunity like uh, for that Chris Cash opportunity match? The, I mean, the opportunity match is, is definitely something that I've been looking forward to, and it's uh, and for those that uh, that don't know, um, I actually made my debut in CZW a year ago at the same exact show, um, and I and uh, you know I've been definitely waiting to come back, but just the scheduling and the timing wasn't right. Um, no. But uh, but now it's definitely I feel like there's um, you know I, I feel like. Uh, I would be a perfect fit in there for uh for the wrestling aspect. Um you know, and I feel like I could definitely bring something to the table and uh you know, this match is definitely going to be uh my opportunity to prove that, so I'm I'm definitely looking forward to it. Also, uh coming up ECWA, you're taking on Danny E. Um and that's on September 15th at the 45th anniversary show. What's your yeah, I'm not too uh, I'm not too worried about it because, you know, his show got canceled from Jersey Shore, so I'm sure he's pretty much depressed. And, uh, you know, he's got other things on his mind, trying to get Jersey Shore back on the television. So I'm <laughs> sure that uh, it'll be an easy win. <laughs> okay, so uh, not too concerned <laughs> with uh, September 15th. Uh, and now, how about, this is a question I'm really looking forward to. You and Aiden Chambers, the ECWA Dream Team, uh, going, yes. you're entered into the K Cup. Uh, how do you feel about that? Getting uh, teamed up with Aiden Chambers. Um, I mean, it's it's. It, I think it's more re- rewarding for the fans uh, to get me to 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 see me and Aiden team up because it, you know when I was facing Aiden, everyone was basically saying it's old school ECWA versus new school ECWA. Um, so now that they're putting us together, I think it's pretty cool. Um, you know, I, I wish that. Uh, you know, my actual tag team partner would have been able to uh, to make it for the K Cup, but unfortunately, it didn't work out that well. But uh, you know, I, I I am happy to team up with Aiden, though. Uh, I mean, he's gained uh, a lot of respect um, on it. You know, from from me, I, you know, I'm giving him a lot of uh, respect um, because of you know after the match that we had, and I found out just how how great of a competitor he is. I mean, he he had a huge reputation obviously going into that match and you know i just really needed to learn you know was it uh was it a fluke or was it everything that everyone's been saying and it definitely was and you know he's a great 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 athlete uh and he's got a lot of fire in him 
and it's and it hasn't died out yet. So I think that uh, we're definitely going to make an impact on this uh, on this tournament. Now, you have no idea. Obviously, the 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 seedings haven't been announced as of yet. Now, what if you're paired? You go up against a team like the Nigerian Nightmares. What's the strategy for that? I mean, do you even have a strategy going into the tournament? We talked about this with the Super 8. You kind of just have to prepare for anything. So I guess it's kind of the same way here. I guess you could say that. Um, But I think that it would be an easy strategy if I would face the Nightmares. Just keep moving. Sooner or later, they'll get get exhausted. They'll fall over, and then I can pin them. I'm pretty (laughs) sure that. I'm going to throw out a guess and say that their cardio is not up to me and Aiden's. So, uh, but that's, you know, that's just a hunch. That's just a hunch. That's, yeah. That would be the key, uh, quite definitely. Uh, but go ahead, Dan. I'm sorry. That's okay. I I, I know my place. Um, on the 13th of October at Cornish Point, I find very interesting you're going to be wrestling Matt Saigon. What's that like being that he's a tag team specialist? Uh I've been I've been kind of uh you know I've been ribbing with uh with Saigon about it once we once we had heard that uh you know the Asians of ECWA are going to be stepping in the ring against each other um, <laughs> but uh so I've been like uh you know I have his number and everything so I would text him every now and then and and just be like oh I guess my lunch special is going to be your lunch special in October <laughs> or uh, you know just just stupid things like that and yeah. uh you know, so I guess uh, I guess October thirteenth when his last takeout's going to happen. But uh, you know, <laughs> are, just are we allowed to laugh at that? Oh yeah, yes, you're definitely allowed to laugh at it. I'm the one that's I'm the one that's saying it, and I'm Asian and he's Asian, so I'm allowed to make the jokes. So you yeah. know, it's definitely. Are, are, are definitely we allowed okay. to laugh at it though? Yeah, yeah, it's fine. Oh, it's fine. Okay. <laughs> he, even Matt would say something like that. Oh, I'm I know. Like, I'm, <laughs> but if you ask, but if you ask me. If you ask me to make you like pork fried rice or something like that, that's going too far. You know, uh, that, that, that's... I, I just saying I would never walk up to you and tell you that. <laughs> no, yeah, yeah, fair I, enough. Yeah, that's fine. <laughs> fair enough. Actually, now... the, the funny part, not not to uh, get sidetracked here, but it was actually funny that uh, when I was in Europe, one of my uh, for when we did a uh, a four on four, one of my partners in the match was uh, was Japanese. So they're, you know, one of the guys obviously point out like, oh, isn't it kind of conflicting that a Japanese is teaming up with a Hawaiian for this match? And I'm like, you know, there's still, there's still controversy here. Yes, there is. <laughs> that's and for funny. anybody that doesn't get that, that's listening. That would be a Pearl Harbor joke. Thank you. Very much. <laughs> I was trying. I was trying not to. Um, how, uh, back onto the rails. Um, how about any other ECWA? Any other uh, upcoming dates coming up in the next two months? Uh, I'm on every one of them. Uh, I know that. Uh, I believe it's. I believe it's October that we have a lot of dates. I believe it's like almost every weekend, if I if I'm not mistaken, or maybe it's November. Six, I don't know off the top of my eight, head. Yeah, it's like you have six, the thirteenth and twentieth. Yeah. So yeah, I'm on. I'm on all those. So I'm definitely. A fun-filled uh, ECWA month there. What, what about what about beyond uh, outside of ECWA? Oh, be, oh, I'm sorry. Beyond, uh, uh, I'm sorry. I didn't uh, I didn't hear that part. Um, I uh, do, 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 do. I know that we go back to VCW in November, November 17th. Uh, I've I've actually not you know now that I've come back from Europe, I've actually uh, kind of you know I I. I went on the business aspect of my bookings, and uh, now that uh, you know I'm getting more professional with this than I was before, certain companies uh, weren't as happy about it, and you know that's perfectly fine. It's understandable. So uh, my scheduled dates uh, have gotten smaller, um, but that's fine because the companies that uh, that I am wrestling for, I'm very happy about, and if the if the other companies didn't want to be on board with it, then you know that's perfectly fine. So, um, you know, it, that, it, so ECWA is like one of my main ones. WXW is one of my main ones, and now VCW. So it's basically those are my main three. And if I get, uh, you know, if I become successful in this CZW uh, match coming up uh, on Saturday, then maybe CZW will be, uh, you know, one of my regulars. That's good to hear. Uh, definitely getting out there. Uh, 
WXW, one uh, quick thing, but before I get to WXW, uh, now Dan's going to be in the trunk with you uh, going down to Virginia. Don't forget yeah, about that. He'll be in the trunk. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, WXW, uh, are, do you have your sights set on Gene Snitsky? Because he's the champ there. Uh, I don't have my sights set on the champion uh, currently. Um, and the reason being is because I feel that there's – I'm still trying to find my place in that company. Uh, I mean, obviously, everybody wants to be champion, and, you know, that's a great goal to have. And, obviously, it's on, it's on my list of goals to be the WXWC4 champion one day. Um, but uh, I, I really want to find my place uh, in there first. You know, that's, that's my first goal. I, I like to take these small steps. Um, and once, I'm, once I find exactly, uh, you know, find my spot, in there and know exactly what I got to do to push myself to get to that spot, then I will become uh, then I will become the uh, the C4 champion. So let me take my small steps first before I aim for the big one. Yeah. So so definitely a uh, feeling out process going there. Now my uh, I guess the wrap up question that I wanted to ask of you, uh, unless Dan has something else. No, uh, we're gonna get real, brother. I, uh, Ryan Big Burgundy. Uh, and I have just recently started a, a workout regimen, and we're just wondering, uh, do you have any advice to pass on to guys who are, you know, I'm in my mid-30s, uh, Big Burgundy's in his mid-20s. Uh, do you have any advice, like, starting out? Um, now, things are going well for Big Burgundy. He's, he's lost some pounds. Uh, I, I'm, I'm more toning up. But do you have any advice uh, for guys just starting out, getting back in the gym? Yeah. Um, first off, don't miss the gym. Um, I mean, obviously, I, you know, you get you get sore, you get tired, uh, you know, and you're going through the work day and you go, oh, crap, i got to go to the gym after this. Um, you know, and, and you think that you can't make it through, but you can. Mm-hmm. Um, there's a lot of, there's a lot of uh, limitations that people have on themselves that they think that they can't do something. And the gym really teaches you where you can go. Um, You know, at one point, uh, you know, when I was, uh, you know, when I was training, I I, I would never think that I could bench press 300 pounds, and then one day I did. Wow. And now that, you know, at that point when I did it, it's like, okay, I did that, so I know I can get to that point. Now, right now, after, you know, that six-week tour and not really getting into the gym much um, because we were wrestling all the time, I probably... I can't even, I, I cannot, I know I can't do 300 pounds right now, but I know that I can get to that point. Mm-hmm. Um, and right now, you know, with you guys just starting out, you really need to find out where you can go with it. And, um, you know, if, if you don't know something, ask somebody. And you really got to sit around and, uh, you know, you got to keep your eyes open um, because there's a lot of people that know a lot of different types of uh, exercises and you'll, I mean, obviously some people don't do it exactly correct, but you'll see, uh, or, you know, you'll start to learn like, okay, that seems right, that seems wrong, and you'll take your own interpretation of it. But you really just keep your eyes open, look around to see what everybody else is doing, and uh, take that in. Do your research also. You know, if you don't, if you want to get, if you go to the gym and you've been doing, you know, arms every Friday, and then you get to the gym on a Friday after a couple weeks, and you go, I don't want to do the same workouts, Go on your phone and Google arm workouts and then get a different workout there and then, you know, you can go ahead and do it. There's there's no limits to what you can do. And the mm-hmm. gym is a great confidence builder. And, you know, after going to the gym for a full week and you hit every day and then you go to the next week and you hit every day, you're going to look at yourself in the mirror and, and you know, you're going to see the small changes, but it's going to make the world of a difference and it's going to make you feel better and it's going to be absolutely worth it. And I wish that everybody would have enough drive to even just get to the gym um but you know unfortunately our country is not like that but uh yeah you know yeah. For guys that are just starting out just really just push yourself find your limits and uh you know you can definitely uh make a world of a change of, uh, and the change that you want to make now going along with that when we had jesse k on she said 90 percent of it is in the kitchen uh as far True. as losing weight and things like that True. I mean, you definitely have to eat, right? I mean, you don't go to the gym, get on the treadmill, run for an hour, and then go eat donuts afterwards. Obviously, that's that's 
that's not Man. it. But, uh, that's where I'm going. <laughs> no, he, he can't. <laughs> he can't do it. So not it. even whole wheat. Not even whole wheat donuts. He can't do it. Oh, damn it! So uh, when I get done uh, the treadmill, uh, I can't go to McDonald's afterwards. That's what you're telling me. I, I mean, you could go to McDonald's if like that's all you you can really go to. Get the grilled chicken sandwich, throw out the bread, and throw in the, you know don't eat the mayonnaise and all that if you're if you're trying to lose weight. You know, so it, it, chicken. it's really just looking outside the box is what you're saying. And if you I'm have to die. if you have to do that, then find a way around uh, adding extra things to your diet. Yes, absolutely. Oh. Yes, I well, mean just like just for example. Stuff. Just for example, like a, a no carb diet, you know, in a no carb diet, you know, you really have to have when you're having your your protein, you have to have high fats also, you know. So I mean, you can eat burgers, but just don't eat the bun because obviously those are the carbs, um, you know, and and the and the burgers usually are high fat, you know. You can have your cheese, which is protein and high fat. So mm. I mean, like, it all depends on like what diet you're doing. But uh, if you're really trying to lose weight and you're really trying to cut fats out, you know, and, and you have to stop at McDonald's, like you said, yeah, think outside the box, just work around it, get the gr- piece of grilled chicken and throw the bun out. Or, um, you know, e- even just packing a can of tuna if you have to. You know, a lot of guys it will pack their lunch, on, you know, on the road just because, it's a it, one, it saves you money, and two, it's a healthier alternative. Um, so you just really have to, like, think about, you really have to plan how you you know how your day is going to go? I I pack uh, like two or three different canisters of uh, or a little Tupperware canisters of uh, of protein just so that uh, you know throughout the day, if uh, you know I need to get my protein and I'll just have that shake. So hmm. yeah, it's a lot of planning. But yes, no, the kitchen is ninety percent of it. Yes, she, she is correct. Wow. Well, it's official. I'm gonna die. <laughs> <laughs> it's it's really no. Amazing. You're not going to die. You can do it. You can do it. You just here here's the here's the big thing on on quote dieting or or eating right. Don't think of it as eating or you're on a diet. So if you're trying to lose weight, if you're trying to lose fifty pounds, don't think of it as yeah I'm on a diet. Think of it as you're eating healthier. Because if you think about it as now I'm just going to eat healthier then it, it's not so much of like, a, oh, I can't have chocolate or, oh, I can't have this. No, you can have that. You just have to have it at the right time. But most of the time, just think, yes, you're eating healthier. But sooner yeah. or later, if you, like, let's say if you drink soda all the time, and obviously you can't drink soda if you're trying to lose weight. So if, no. you, if you change to water and, you know, you're drinking water all the time, sooner or later, within a week or two, somebody's going to offer you a soda or you're going to go to a restaurant and then obviously you can get one, but you're not going to want one anymore because you've been doing because you're you've been doing it for so long. You've been you know you cut soda out. It's just like oh, I'll just have a water. I've been drinking water all the time. Sooner or later, it's going to be a mental. It, it, I mean, it's always a mental thing, but sooner or later, you're just going to get out of those bad habits, and then you're just always going to be eating healthy. And then you're going to look at other stuff and just go, you know, I, I don't need that because I just eat healthy now. Like that, it, it's that really, is. That is so true about the soda because I, I was, no lie, this is going to shock a lot of people, I was like six sodas a day and now I, wow. I'm not I'm not fighting to get a soda. Exactly. Wow. That six sodas a day. So now there's something else out that you're doing that, uh, you know, that you're eating and you know <laughs> you shouldn't be, or at, the, at least the time that you're eating, you know, obviously if you, if you have like a, a Pop-Tart before bed or something, you know, which you shouldn't. So if you know that you're doing that at night, obviously eat something sooner so that by the time that it comes around the time that you're about to pass out, then you're not hungry, you don't need to binge. So then yeah. that cuts that out, and then that cuts more pounds out. Always change what you know is, is not helping you. Mm. Another reason why I don't drink. Obviously, beer does not help you at all. No, so, no, it does not, so no more Applebee's for me after the wrestling shows. No, you can have Applebee's. Applebee's have some good stuff on their menu. They have steak and vegetables. You can have steak and vegetables. Well, I I, I partake in their three dollar Long Island iced teas. Oh, uh, okay, no. <laughs> <laughs> you could have a Diet Coke and Diet Coke and rum because I'm pretty sure that's uh, that's pretty lean. Oh, that's, oh, that's, well, that sounds. Think it's really good. Thinking outside the box. No, this, is, this is what we did. 
Seltzer you. water, seltzer water, m- Mio, and Savaka. There you go. <laughs> there you go. You uh, can you can thank uh, Mr. Ricky Martinez for that one because that's all he drinks is Diet Coke and rum. I believe. I'm gonna thank him. I am. We have had him on. Hashtag uh, Ricky the model. Yes. Uh, he loves yes. the hashtags. Uh, we had a little game with him where uh, we were hashtagging. No, we're not doing that again. No, I'm not doing that with uh, K. Cohen, but because that's Ricky's thing. But uh, hashtag in drum. No, that's our thing. That's our thing. <laughs> I let me tell you something about Ricky Martinez <laughs> and his hashtag and his Twitter account. I myself, Sebastian Cruz, and uh, who else was with us? Uh, my apologies, I, I don't remember who else was with me. But we evolved Ricky Martinez into Twitter. Because he had a Twitter account, and he's like, "Yeah, I really don't use it." And he goes, "I don't know what to use it for." I say, "You say you say stupid stuff on Twitter, and people love it. That's all you need to do." <laughs> and he goes, "Okay, so we're in the car ride, and let's just say, hypothetically speaking, Sebastian saw a Mexican running down the street, and he and he says in the car like, "Oh, that's funny. Sebastian saw a Mexican. Why don't you go chase your dad?" And now I would say, "Ricky, tweet that." He goes, "What? Tweet that? Why?" Because that was funny and stupid. Tweet that. Okay. So then by the end of that weekend, he would tweet like every two seconds, and he was hashtagging every two seconds. So now he is obsessed with Twitter, and that's thanks to his boys, which is me, and a couple of other our friends, and now that's why he hashtags everything. And even in conversations, he'll be over at my house, and I will tell you this, this is the straight-up truth. He, uh, we went out one night. He got drunk. We came back to my place. He's playing NFL Madden with me. I went to bed. He stayed up and played Madden against some random dude on the Internet. And this guy keeps sending a message. Uh, he keeps sending the messages talking trash like, oh, look, at touchdown all night, blah, blah, blah. Well, Ricky sent him a message after the game was over because he came back and beat him. And I have a picture of it still on my phone, but it says, oh, doesn't seem like you're talking now. I guess you, uh, I wouldn't be either after all those interceptions. Hashtag, I win. <laughs> and I said, Ricky, you're hashtagging on PlayStation. I love you. <laughs> oh, that's great. That's, that's great. Awesome. Yeah, that's... so when you thank Ricky, you're thanking the boys that, that evolved him into that. So, yes, I'll, I'll I, will... Take, I will take some of the credit for that. I will definitely. I can't wait to see you guys again on the 15th. I'll be seeing you on uh, Saturday, uh, quite frankly. I'll be in attendance at uh, CZW's Down with the Sickness. Uh, good luck with that match. Uh, the 15th, you have uh, you have Danny E. You have a lot going on. Uh, you got the K-Cup with Aiden Chambers. Busy month of October. Uh, now, where can the people follow you, Keikoa? They can follow me on Twitter. At Keikoa, F-H-K-E-K-O-A. I know because no one could spell Keikoa, so at Keikoa, F-H. Yeah. And uh, you can message me on Facebook, but please, please, for the love of God, do not send me game invites, uh, event invites, app invites, because it will just make me so aggravated. And then when you finally leave me a message, I won't talk to you because I'm so <laughs> aggravated. <laughs> but uh, No, I'm just, I'm just messing around. I'll, I usually answer all my messages. But, uh, yeah, uh you know, add me on Facebook, follow me on Twitter, and uh, hopefully, um, you know, I can get in touch with uh, with everybody and uh, answer you guys when I can. All right, Keikoa, it was a, a, a fantastic time. Thanks for coming on, especially after last night's uh, shenanigans. Uh, check I can't is wait. In the mail. Yeah, uh, the triple check is in the mail, but uh, thanks for stopping by. Can't wait to have you oh, back. Thank you very much. I appreciate it. And good night. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm telling you, this is. Uh, Wow. This has been, been a great week, man. It's been it, a great week. Things are happening, things are developing, it's getting it's getting awesome. Yeah. Uh I do want to announce uh next week is part two or part due uh, part yeah. of a French interruption with Monsieur Oh La La. Monsieur. It's Monsieur. Why can't anybody pronounce that right? With Monsieur Ooh La La. Uh, so uh, we're going to pick up where he left off, and that's pretty much he's going to pick up uh, the transition from referee to wrestler. Excellent. So, uh, then we're going to have uh, Papa Don on. Uh, we had him in the room. We're going to have him back on uh, Hell in a Cell Talk Radio. 
So that's going to be exciting. The week following that, we're going to have CZW owner DJ Hyde and the general, if you will, of Blackheart. None other than Breaker Morant will be joining us. And I saw Breaker over the weekend uh, at a show. And it looks like he healed up quite well from uh, the burns. Was it instantaneous? <laughs> no, it wasn't. <laughs> <laughs> no? No, no, it wasn't. No, no, he, he's not dark, man. No, no, okay. Not Two-Face? No. And then the I, 20... be- I believe in Breaker Moran. I believe in Breaker Morant too. I I certainly do. Uh, then the 26th, let's uh, just uh, take a look here. We're going to have Mia Yim. Uh, recently signed a contract in Japan. She will be here. And, of course, Amadeus Thorne, Indy's Most Hated. Uh, we're going to talk about the Beast show that's coming up on the 29th uh, that a lot of people seem to be booking that date now. <sighs> then, yeah, uh, well, you know, because, you know, class, nobody has it. Then we're going to have on the 3rd, this is a big announcement, this is the first time you're going to hear it, ECWA matchmaker Joe Zanoli will be his first appearance on the cell. We, we we have talked to him before, but we, we, we don't have ownership of that one. And also on the third, the return of the monster A2. Oh, <laughs> goosh. <laughs> he will be back. Uh, he will Large get... and massive pecker. Yes. And then on the 10th, uh, just confirmed tonight, we are going to have a recent ECWA signing, Tony Mamaluke. Oh, that's official? That's official. Ah, official. Excellent, excellent. I just found out when I was working out at the gym, got a message, and he will be coming on October I 10th. I am interested to ask him a few questions about his WCW I WCW ECW he is going to get the full treatment. Oh yeah, no, I know that, but I, I would like to ask him a few questions because he was kind of pushed, like many people, pushed uh, to the back burner in the very poorly run and awesome shows WCW is putting on. I, I I certainly agree. He he's been overlooked for years. Uh, of course, he was trained by Dean Malenko. He has the pedigree. He's been around. He's, of course, involved with Extreme Rising as well. So, so Malenko trained him? We are going to uh, definitely uh, enjoy that one. And also, uh, coming up this Wednesday, uh, the return of Robert Knight. Uh, of course, he returns every week. So, uh, Do you have it any other way? I would not. No. Robert Knight is uh, the golden tongue of New Moon Rising Wrestling. Uh, I just want to throw out a few other plugs. So that's uh, pretty much the next month and a half that we have uh, coming up here on Hell in a Cell Talk Radio. Stay tuned, people. And ladies and gentlemen, you hear paper crinkling. He doesn't really have paper. It's just a sound effect. It is. It is. Uh, <laughs> make sure you check out czwwrestling.com, and it's cz and then wrestling.com. Uh, uh, also check out ecwaprowrestling.com uh, for the 45th anniversary show that's coming up. And yeah. also... NMRWrestling.com. Uh, that's for New Moon res- uh, Rising Wrestling. Uh, you can find Keikoa, as he said, on Twitter.com slash FH, and also on Facebook the same way. Uh, so, Dan, it's been a great week. Uh, I believe Marion hates me at this point. Uh, because, uh, well, yeah, I asked first, trust me. <laughs> Honey, is it okay if I do it on the show? No! <laughs> I felt so bad, but <laughs> you, you, you deserve it. It's very interesting. I just uh, ran into the old. I was just kidding. Don't hit me. <laughs> I, I, ow! <laughs> I just ran into the old ECWA site. Oh yeah, yeah. The Fallen Angel, Christopher Daniels, the champ, Novi and Frankie Gaz- Nova and Frankie Gazarian are the tag oh. champs, and uh, Platinum Michael Preston is the TV champ. My goodness, uh, let me tell you something about the history of ECW. I'm not going to go on a long tangent here, but... No, the, the, why would you? We're already past it. Never mind. But, but the, the, the amount of talent that has come out of ECWA is amazing, and I think the, 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 the roster they have now it, uh, beats it. 
Except M Dog, except M Dog Twenty. Dan, I want to play something real quick. Well, we call it sports yeah. entertainment now. That's the uh, the new term for it. But um, I uh, I got into it in 2000 and uh, pro- well, well, actually, believe it or not, I came over here in 2002. Um, I was given a uh, recommendation <laughs> of a place called the Monster Factory, uh, Monster where Factory. I uh, came over for summer. I think it was. I didn't know a lot of money. Thing. Worked two jobs, two, maybe two or three jobs. Very to pay, uh, pay my uh, way. Um, I came over here. I met Larry Sharp. Was supposed to be running. A bit disappointed when I found that Larry Sharp wasn't actually uh, running the, the the school itself. And of course, uh, the trainer who I'd never really heard of. I, I think you you know him by name. Uh, was it Ed the Razor? Uh, maybe an Ed the Razor. Uh, <laughs> but uh, I, you know, was a bit disappointed when I found out about it. So, I mean, I, a lot of people say my career started in 2002. It didn't. I didn't really take anything from the Monster Factory, to be honest with you. I just I want to reiterate that I didn't learn a goddamn thing from the Monster Factory. <laughs> I love that quote. Bunch of, and, uh, bunch of bunch of goddamn wankers. He's still, uh, you know. On, on as a graduate, <laughs> unbelievable. I don't know when I graduated the Monster Factory, and he's out of his goddamn mind. If, if you talk to Justin America, uh, he's still missing a singlet. <laughs> <laughs> uh, a certain a certain world champion has it. I uh, don't understand it. <laughs> just I don't understand what the hell they're talking about. I was in New Jersey. I swear to God, it smelled like crap. <laughs> I think it's when they were the... I, I forget where... And Larry Shark crapped his pants, I swear to God, right in front of me. All I remember... <laughs> all I remember of Larry Sharp was the cigar smoke. All I remember is it smelled like cigars, and I... Uh, uh, when he breathed, it sounded like... <laughs> <laughs> what the That's Larry Sharp breathing. Uh, Don't no, you I, understand? I know, Dan. Uh, Fat, come on. So, next Wednesday... Uh, don't you make fun of my poor Taurus. <laughs> we'll be back next Wednesday, Dan. Take me out.